Hey, I'm here with Debbie Black. She's the current director of operations at University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. I've known Debbie my whole life. Um, <laughs> Debbie started her career at St. Joseph's University playing under coach Jim Foster. Um, after graduation, she went overseas and played in Australia until 1996, only to return back to the States to play in the ABL and WNBA until her retirement in 2005, um, after which she coached with former SJU coach uh, Foster at Vanderbilt and Ohio State, and in 2013, she was named the head coach of Eastern Indiana University um, until 2017, until she came to Chattanooga. Um, Debbie is the only professional female basketball player to have accomplished, um, uh, what, what is it, the triple? I'll, I'll call it, I'll tell you, it's a, called a quadruple double. Yes. So four, um, basically that is a four, in four categories I had double figures, and I'm five foot two, so it wasn't in blocks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so she had 10, 10 points, 14 rebounds, 12 assists, <laughs> and 10 steals. Um, so one of the things that's really awesome about Debbie and watching her play over the years is that she's never let her height affect her. Um, so for the average basketball pay player, you'd say they're about how tall? Probably five seven, five eight. Well, I, I, it's hard to say anymore. They're getting bigger, but maybe maybe five eight, five eleven. I mean, somewhere in that in that time now, I think they're a lot bigger than my size. And your how tall? Five two is probably my size. <laughs> <laughs> so, over the course of time in your basketball career, how did you utilize your what most people would say was a disadvantage to you as your advantage? You know, I think um, I think in anything in life, I think if you kind of realize what your assets are, um, your assets are whatever that you want them to be. I'm small. The ball's got to hit the ground. They have to dribble. It's not a sport where we just pass the ball over my head. So anything that was in my reach, and meaning hitting the ground, was mine. I mean, therefore, that's where I was, like the leader of steals. Um, anything that, if, if a big player, which is a normal thing, would bring the ball down, it natural instinct for a 6'5 kid to bring the ball down, I'm going to get it. So you had to just work hard at what you knew were something that you brought to the table, which was that. And how have you applied that throughout your life and your coaching career, focusing on strengths as opposed to weaknesses? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes it's not as easy as you think, but I think you, um, you have to look at each player, um, each individual, as an individual, even though they're a, a part of a team, and see how you can do what you can do to help them succeed both on the court and off the court. And I think, I mean, Jim Foster obviously is a mentor of mine, and he's taught me that. I mean, he cared about us in so many ways, and I think that's what I try to do with the players. So if you're long, you don't have to get so close. When you're my size and you have short arms, and you have to get close. There's things that you have to just say, who am I? I think the biggest thing for these kids is to understand who they are. Not, not a, I want to be like her. I want to be who I am. So it's really about being who you are. How do you feel mental health plays a role in athletics for your, um, well, one of the things that we're seeing more and more is that with um, adolescents and all of your college players are adolescents at this point, mental health is becoming more and more of a challenge, anxiety, depression, and, and how have you seen that really over the past few years take an effect on players? Yeah, this is a very interesting subject. Um, the reason I say that is because I, um, I think we all probably had a little bit of that <laughs> growing up in the 80s and the 90s. And I think that um, I, I, I'm not a fan of medicating um, or over-medicating. So I think mental health has become a huge factor as I've coached these young athletes and their, whether they have ADHD or whatever the words are, um, whether they have anxiety, whether they have depression. I feel like personally that, um, and I'm not a doctor, this will make that known. But I think that we over-medicate our kids. I mm -hmm. think, honestly, there's, you know, there's outlets. We can get them to work out. We can 
there's work we didn't we didn't have the same thing and knowing you mm -hmm. knowing me mm -hmm. I would have been an ADH kid I, I was all <laughs> over the place so so my point is like would would you have medicated me in in order for me then to see a kid not really who they are because what they're doing is they're not they're not doing the things or they're a little bit down and you don't know if it's the medication or the effects of the medication and I think we need to let them go we need to let them to be them so mm -hmm. I I'm I'm kind of anti over medicating these kids mm -hmm. um, and what kind of ways then would you suggest or recommend um, j besides exercise having an outlet you know what I think it, um, you know I have a family that's very musical mm -hmm. I have a family that um, you know likes to do things my mom likes to garden and I, I just think about and I think about it myself because I'm pretty much a sports person but what are the outlets that you can go to outside of sports that will help you it might be you might love to walk dogs you might love to play music something that gives you another outlet to that feeling of maybe like what you said depression or you know being hyper or being you need to have outlets and um and you can do it in a variety of ways you need hobbies i guess that's my my final thought is you need hobbies okay um so one a few last things here before we end would you say that what 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 has made you more successful, your losses or your wins? Hmm. I think it's an easy answer. I mean, I don't remember any of my wins. I remember all my losses. Um, I think, I don't want to use the word failure, but I think when you um, realize that, I mean, you need to work on something. See, what happens with wins? You think you're pretty good, and you don't work as hard as you should. Speaking from someone I think who worked hard, but when I won, I felt pretty good. I felt like I don't need to work on my shots so much. But on the losses, I felt like I turned the ball over too much. I didn't. So I think in life, you have to learn from whatever whatever comes in your path. Adversity is a great thing for people. So and adversity are losses. Adversity is losing whatever you lose. And I think they're the things that taught me the most in life, and they still do. As I grow in this in this world. It's adversity that, that, that teaches me and losses in whatever it is. Because if I don't have losses, then I think I'm great. <laughs> and I'm not great. <laughs> so um, besides your family and besides Coach Foster, because we know both are, are very important to you, um, who would you say has been your biggest mentor or the person you've looked up to the most, whether you know them or you don't? Wow. Um, I took away a lot of her options there. <laughs> you put me in uh, between a rock and a hard place here. I don't know if I can answer that because I'm one of the like, most fortunate people to have an unbelievable family who um, I'm so close to that I can go to all four of them or all three of them and my mom and dad, all five of them are different. So I have a different view from every viewpoint. So um, I, I really, I mean, this is a really crazy thing. I really didn't need many people outside of them. Whether I was in Australia, whether I was in Italy, whether I was in Greece, I was always like, I could always go to one of those five for a different view on where I was at at the time of my life. And I still have them. And so I don't have a mentor outside of them. I, I, don't, I never needed one. I think that's why people don't really get to know me because they think, I really didn't, I didn't need one. And that's just the truth. And uh, so I'm pretty lucky. Yeah, you are really lucky. <laughs> so... So the last closing question, what is one quote you live by or something you say often to your players that instills hope? Success is a journey, not a destination. I think it's my favorite of all quotes. Um, and uh, I've said that often because I never really realized what that meant. Um, but it is a journey. It's a journey through whether you're playing or you're not playing or whether you're working, but it's a journey, not a destination. And um, you have to keep on that journey. You have to keep working hard and you have to keep finding it. And every day is a different day. So I guess that is my favorite of all time quotes. Success is a journey, not a destination. So I think I just add here that one of uh, 
one of Debbie's greatest medicines is laughter because you're never going to catch a moment that she's not laughing um, unless it's after a loss. But even like an hour later, she's going to start laughing in order to put herself in a better mood. So I just want to thank you. Um, Debbie's been one of my greatest supporters over the years, and I love her dearly. And uh, we'll catch you guys on our next episode. Thank you, Ellie.